An ancient story about the tragic love life of one of the Greek gods has materialized in a revolutionary work of art. The 17th century sculptor Gian Lorenzo Bernini baffles all who see his visualization of Apollo and the girl he fails to win over. Daphne escapes capture at the very last moment by turning into a tree. The story comes from one of the most widely read books of ancient Rome, The Metamorphoses by the poet Ovid. This work comprises a series of short stories about mythological characters, changing shape, and more often than not, features victimized young females. Bernini had already used Ovid as an inspiration for his previous sculpture, Proserpina abducted by Pluto. But in Daphne's transformation, the central theme of the Metamorphoses is now its main focus. Ovid's Metamorphoses had been a treasure trove for painters and sculptors for centuries. Bernini's depiction of Apollo and Daphne can be seen as the ultimate achievement surpassing all attempts to visualize any of the transformations in Ovid's work. When you look at it, it isn't easy to identify with either the perpetrator or his victim, but we can at least appreciate the brilliant solutions of this sculptural mission impossible. The sculptor has succeeded in capturing a moment of great intensity and motion in a lifeless and colorless material. The divine stalker loses at the moment he thought he had won, as Ovid writes, Her soft bosom is encased by a thin layer of bark. Her arms grow into branches, and her hair into leaves. Her feet, just now so swift, are hardened into slow roots. And with his hand planted on the trunk, Apollo feels her heart, throbbing beneath the newly formed bark. It was the third sculptural group the young Bernini made for the richest art collector in Rome, in what is now the Galleria Borghese. Although his previous works are unsurpassed masterpieces in their own right, Bernini managed to step up his game every time. In his own words, the sculptor was in a continuous competition with himself. One of the things in which Bernini took it one step further is the victim's expression of horror. When you compare Apollo's target, Daphne, to Proserpina, you will see that Daphne is actually screaming. Bernini wanted to bring to marble what had up till then only been done on canvas, as in these examples by Caravaggio. Chiseling the cavity of an open mouth into a delicate head of stone may have been regarded too great a risk, but Bernini was prepared to take it. It is with some justification that the sculptor would later boast. I never struck a false blow. Be that as it may, Bernini was helped by an assistant who carved the foliage. The delicateness of the leaves growing out of Daphne's fingers proves that this assistant, Giuliano Finelli, was at least as technically skilled as Bernini himself. But the great artist claimed all the credit for himself. What was also new is Bernini's approach of the single moment. The group of Apollo and Daphne was originally placed against the wall, as only one side could effectively convey this split second of action at first sight. Indeed, when you look at it from the side you were never supposed to see, it is almost unintelligible. A final thing to explore is the fact that Bernini took an iconic classical statue as the model for his Apollo. Bernini adopted him, made him younger and less muscular. He slightly modified Apollo's posture and cloth to give him speed and put him in a rather less dignified setting. However uncomfortable the subject of the statue, the sculptor's overall approach, craftsmanship, and daring prove that Bernini was a truly innovating artist.